everyone. The new year is almost upon us, 2024. And up to now, I have not yet uh, done the third and last part of the series, uh, which I started almost a month back on, on Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, a series of devotionals entitled Saved by Grace. So I think it's only right that after having started said uh, series, I should finish it before the year ends. So without further ado, let me just uh, go to the passage which we are studying and I will just read verses 8 up to 10. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I think a quick recap is necessary before we expound verses 8 to 10. Let me just remind you of what the Apostle taught at the beginning of the chapter in verse 1. Basically, or to summarize everything, men, we, are sinful, helpless to save ourselves, and the proper way to describe that according to the language used in this chapter is that we are dead in our trespasses and sins. So that if ever we are going to be saved, it needs the sovereign initiative and power of God to raise us spiritually from our spiritual death and helplessness. And that's what God did in verse uh, 4 and uh, up to verse 6. It says here that uh, God raised us up because he's rich in mercy out of his great love he raised us up with Jesus Christ made us alive together with Christ and so what happened was uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit he healed our dead spiritual faculties so much so that we were now able to see the kingdom of God recognize and appreciate the uh, promise of salvation, the gospel, we were now able to understand it. Uh, God revealed it to us when he made us alive spiritually. So much so that we are now able to respond to his uh, wonderful uh, gospel that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. He was uh, raised as a sign of his victory over sin and death. And uh, his promises, whoever believes in him uh, will not perish but have everlasting life. So that's what happened. God had to take the initiative. And of course, the ultimate reason for that is for his uh, glory so that all throughout eternity, the Lord God can display uh, to the whole universe and to uh, all his creatures whether they be angel, angelic or uh, glorified human beings, that indeed he is merciful and gracious, uh, exceedingly beyond uh, what we can comprehend, the measurable, measurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And so that leads us to verses 8 up to 10. And uh, the conclusion here, which was actually already mentioned in verse uh, 5, I think, although, yeah, it's verse 5, by grace you have been saved. That is the conclusion and the theme of the whole passage, that salvation is a gift of God. It's, it's, by, it's by grace. It's God who took the initiative. If ever we are saved, it's simply because of the sovereign grace of God and of course uh, that is mostly from the perspective of divine sovereignty but here in verse uh, 8 it appears that uh, we also have a 
part uh, in this, in this salvation, that there is a human aspect to it, although ultimately, it's still because of the grace of God. So, let me just uh, summarize the two points which I think verses 8 to 10 is uh, are uh, teaching us. So, these verses, in line with that conclusion that salvation is by grace, it teaches us that, number one, because of grace, salvation is free, and because of grace, salvation is fruitful. So, let me write that down. One, because of grace, salvation is free. And number two, because of grace, salvation is fruitful. And by fruitful, I am referring, of course, to the good works which uh, the Holy Spirit produces in a saved person, in a person who is saved by grace. So first, salvation is free. Uh, verse 8 is very clear. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. And I think that uh, follows from all that has been discussed in the previous uh, verses. But uh, there is something even uh, deeper here. And some theologians uh, think and believe that the gift of God does not refer only to uh, the whole package of salvation. But even that uh, particular act which we have to exercise in order to be saved, faith itself is a gift of God. At any rate, without uh, having to go into that uh, deeper, uh, uh, let's just proceed to verse 9, which says, Not a result of works so that no one may boast. In other words, being saved is really the work of God. We cannot earn it. We cannot deserve it. We can just uh, receive it by faith. And, uh, and someone has compared this act of faith to the act of a beggar uh, pleading and stretching forth his hand to simply receive the gift which uh, the rich and merciful God has to give, the gift of salvation. It's not something you earn or work for. It's something that uh, you receive uh, by, by faith and by by uh, stretching forth your uh empty hands of faith, you, you, you are actually uh, declaring your, your emptiness and unworthiness and your need for, for God to save you, not because you deserve it, not because you earn it or merit it, but because uh, God is gracious and you trust in the graciousness of God. Of course, in mentioning this, we should also mention uh, that this, the, this, this gift of salvation uh, even though we were not the ones who worked for it, there was someone who did. The Lord Jesus Christ. We could not pay for our sins. We could not save ourselves. We are sinful. But the spotless, uh, uh, sinless Lamb of God died on the cross in our behalf, in our place, to pay for our sins. And on the cross, He paid it in full. And He rose again uh, after three days to prove to the world that indeed, that his sacrifice was effective uh, so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life by the, by the grace of God and not because we work for it. So that's the first point. Salvation is free, but it does not end there. If you are truly saved by faith alone, and let me mention that, it, because it's by grace, it's by faith alone, not by works. It was Christ who completed the work of salvation. He paid for it in full. He did everything that needed to be done in order to pay for our sins and to save us so that there, there's really nothing more that we can do to save ourselves. And that means, indeed, I cannot boast of anything uh, with respect to my salvation. But does that mean that I, I, I won't do any good works anymore? No. Verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And this means uh, one evidence, one proof that you are really saved, that God has really worked in your life and raised you from the dead and made you alive in Christ, is that you produce 
good works, which in fact God has already prepared in eternity past for, for us to do. That's why He saved us, for us to do good works. But please remember, based on this context, the good works are not in order to earn salvation, but because you are already saved. They are, uh, what is this, motivated by gratitude for what God has already done. And, and, and in fact, in other uh, passages of Scripture, I think it's in Philippians chapter 2, verse uh, 13 and verse four, uh, 12 and 13, it, it says there, uh, we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling because it is God who works in us both to will and to do. So when God saved us, when He made us alive and we received Jesus Christ into our hearts by faith, we are completely justified, declared righteous in His sight. And that's salvation. But it does not end there. God continues to work in our lives and causes us to walk in His statutes, in His laws, and to do good works precisely because we are already made alive. We don't do good works in order to be made alive. We do good works because we have already been made alive. You will know that the tree is alive because it bears fruit, but the fruit does not cause the tree to be alive. The fruit proves that the tree is already alive. So, in a sense, okay, let me uh, just to uh, conclude everything. We are saved by faith alone. I think it was Martin Luther if I remember correctly, who said something like this, we're saved by faith alone. But the faith alone which, sa which saves cannot remain alone. But by, by its very nature, by its very nature, it will produce good works. So in a saved person, you see both. You see, sal uh, you see both faith and good works. The two are inseparable. But strictly speaking, you are saved by the grace of God, by faith alone. And when you're saved, when you're made alive in Christ Jesus, as a result, as a consequence, you do good works which God himself does in you because you are his workmanship and he is continually uh, doing that which is good and producing that which is good in your heart and in your life. And so that's it. That's the uh, final part. Finally, we've uh, completed the whole uh, devotional series on Saved by Grace. Salvation is free. Salvation is fruitful. Salvation is by grace. Be blessed.